Hello my YouTube fam, how are you? I hope you are doing well. Today I'm going to be doing a guide on Phasmophobia because I noticed a lot of new people on Phasmophobia that do not know how to play the game. So I'm just going to give a quick how-to tutorial and some evidence that you can find without um, looking for, you know, with, without evidence you, you will be able to find or identify, possibly identify the ghost. So, just for all of you out there, you have a challenge mode right here, and then you can read up on the challenge mode and, and give it, you know, give it a go, if you can. Like this one, for instance, no pills, no sanity, no evidence, get to work. Yes, it's a tough one, but it is possible to find out, because there are certain traits that ghosts have. So, this is going to be a tutorial only. If you are starting out brand new, I suggest going amateur, uh, even though the <laughs> thermometer is going to give you some trouble. So you just run out of the room, come back, run out of the room, come back. But I've noticed a lot of people making mistakes in the game. So I just want to point out some things here. I'm going to start at Tanglewood because that is the obvious map that most beginners like to play because you're just getting to know the game. And I'm going to be doing professional, but I'm not going to be doing many ghost hunts as of yet. Um, because, oops, because um, I'm, this is basically going to be how to uh, find the ghost room, possibly how to find the bone, because I still struggle with finding the bone a lot. <laughs> the other day, the bone was on top of the bed, and I didn't even see it. It was kind of wedged in between the cupboard. I don't know how it got there. But anyway, this is Phasmophobia. And um, I did notice a lot of players, when they leave the truck, the key is still hanging here. It's impossible to enter the house without the key. So I'm, I'm thinking there's a lot of cheaters out there. Uh, this might be a thing where people that cheat um, don't grab the key when they leave the truck. So that's the thing, always grab the key. And now for your inventory slot, you have a, third, a fourth slot just for your lighter. So you can see you can pick up three items and the lighter. So what I suggest, what I recommend is you grab the EMF reader. So you can switch it on using your right mouse button. You grab the camera and you grab the video camera and I'll explain why just now because if you are playing professional you're going to need the video camera and it's also a forced evidence forced evidence means even if there's no evidence it shows up so I haven't tested every ghosts force evidence but you know we'll get there in the end I'll eventually find out if the forced evidence works even if there there are no ghosts in the game. So I'm not using the default buttons, but you I don't know what the default is to open up your book. You'll have to check that. And then um, when you go to ghosts, you can read up a little bit about it. So I'm going to be explaining every ghost in detail, and then I'm just going to do a few to show you guys. So the spirit. Spirits are very common ghosts. They are very powerful, but Passive only. Attracting when they need to. They defend their place of death to the utmost degree, killing anyone that is caught and understaying their welcome. Weakness. A spirit can temporarily be stopped by burning incense near them. Now, this is where my timer comes in. And I'm going to show you guys the timer. Um, I downloaded the live split timer from the internet. And I've assigned a key to my timer. So you'll see there's a timer that's going to appear in the top right corner. You can have a key as well. And you can just use the start stop button to start and stop the timer. Now if, a, if you smudge the ghost and after 3 minutes it still doesn't hunt. So there's a timer start stop. After 3 minutes it still doesn't hunt. It's definitely a spirit. That's the only way to identify the spirit effectively because um, spirits have been known to do things that other ghosts do these days they're almost a new mimic all right so three minutes the wraith wraiths are one of the most dangerous ghosts you will find 
It is also the only known ghost that has the ability of flight and has sometimes been known to travel through walls. Yes, wraiths actually teleport to you from their ghost room and they follow you around. A strange wraiths are never never touch the ground meaning they can't be tracked by footprints weakness wraiths are afraid of salt and will actively avoid it so this is not actually true because wraiths will not touch the salt meaning that is the way to detect a wraith in a no evidence run if uh, if the ghost is hunting you and it's running over the salt and there are there's there's no footprints or the salt is not disturbed then you can mark Wraith and just for in case those people that haven't played it yet so you go to Wraith on the evidence bar and you click Wraith so that's going to be that okay so that is it for Wraith Phantom a phantom is a ghost that can possess the living inducing fear to those around it they are most commonly summoned from Ouija boards Strengths, uh, looking at a phantom will drop your sanity considerably faster. Weaknesses, taking a photo of the phantom will make it temporarily disappear. Now, I'm not sure about hunts. Uh, I have heard of people that say that if you, if a phantom is hunting you and you take a photo, it disappears. I don't know if that's per chance or if it's true, but when there's a ghost event and you take a photo of the phantom it disappears immediately um, that's not a sure thing be careful because sometimes the ghost event just ends and then you're like oh it's a phantom and then yeah that that is um, not a good way to to identify the phantom but while it's hunting you the phantom is nearly visible. You're going to think to yourself, where the hell is this ghost? Where the hell is this ghost? I can't see it. Then you know that is your marker for phantom. So use the two evidences together. When you take a photo and it disappears, and when it's hunting you and you can't really see it, because you have to practice looping around the table. That is a thing that you're going to find uh, helps by practicing looping so you gotta die a lot I know I've been playing the game for two years I've died looping many times because sometimes there's a rubbish bin right next to the table you run into the bin it's like oh, shit I can't move that happens so that is how you identify the phantom okay so the poltergeist um, one of the most famous ghosts the poltergeist known to manipulate objects around its spread fear into its victims strange poltergeist can throw multiple objects at once with great force weakness with nothing to throw the poltergeist poltergeist becomes powerless all right so a poltergeist throws an item every half a second so in two seconds two items will be thrown and you'll see sometimes the items thrown thrown again thrown again then you can almost certainly rule it's a poltergeist but other ghosts throw items too so if you see items flying around throw the items back on the table get a second hunt and see if it starts throwing the items again because sometimes um, it'll stop throwing mid hunt then you know it's not a poltergeist so a poltergeist will always throw items you can also build what is called a polter pile that is by stacking up a bunch of random objects um, in the middle of a, a looping table and then you will see items flying left and right and as soon as it stops throwing you know it's not a poltergeist so that is without evidence you can still identify it All right the banshee the banshee the singing siren known for attracting its victims through song it has been known to single out its prey before making a killing blow strength the banshee will weaken their target before striking weakness the banshee can sometimes be heard screaming with a parabolic microphone this is true another thing they don't tell you about the banshee is that it will hunt a single player so if you are four people and the banshee is only running after one and you're standing there and the banshee just moves through you without killing you it's a sacrifice that some people have to make. I've done it a couple of times. If somebody screams Banshee, 
Then I run into the middle of the room and checks if it starts hunting me. If it strikes me, we know it's not a banshee. I know I die in the process, but sometimes you're desperate to find out what the ghost is after sitting in the room for about half an hour. <laughs> so yes, you can detect a banshee with the parabolic microphone. You have to sit a while because the banshee will eventually uh, make a banshee scream noise. It's like, a I know, I, I sound pathetic, but... It has this weird sound, a unique sound that it makes when you are hunting banshees. So that is one thing. Um, and the other thing is it will target another player. But be careful, be warned. If that player dies, it will immediately start hunting the next one and the next one and the next one. So it will start going on a killing rampage. When it stops hunting, it reselects a new player to hunt. And then when the hunt begins, you can see if it's a banshee again. Because it will hunt one player only. But while it's hunting it kills someone, it's going to start killing random. Okay, so a gin. This one is actually um, very easy to detect if it uh, sees you and it moves very fast. Okay. So a djinn is a territorial ghost that will attack when threatened. It's also been known to be able to travel at significant speed. A djinn will travel at a faster speed if the victim is far away. Weakness turning off the location's power source will prevent the djinn from using its ability. This is very important because if a djinn will never switch off the breaker. So if you've played the entire game and the, the ghost hasn't switched off the breaker, it's probably a gen. They will never turn off their power, because their power source is the breaker. Another thing, a gen will not travel fast if the breaker is off. So if it runs to you quickly, you smudge, you hide, you go switch off the breaker, and then you go stand with your flashlight on, and it will charge slowly, it will start walking towards you. You know it's a gen. Um, another thing, yeah, yeah, that's it. So basically, the breaker is its power and the breaker is its weakness. So switching off the breaker will definitely get the gin to slow down. Then you know it's a gin. The mare. I hate this ghost. <laughs> I, I have to say, this is my worst ghost. I'm pretty sure this is the ghost that has killed me the most times. But here's the mare. A mare is the source of all nightmares, making it more powerful in the dark. Strength, a mare will have an increased chance to attack in the dark. Weakness, turning the lights on around the mare will lower its chance to attack, which is not actually true. So, let's get into the mare. Um, the mare will most commonly have this trait, where if, when you switch a light on, it immediately switches the light off. But since playing the last few days, I've noticed that other ghosts do that too. Like the demon, for instance. If I switch on the light, it automatically switches it off. However, if you do switch off the breaker and you switch on the light, the mare will switch it off still. That is something I've noticed. I don't know if it's something, but for some reason, if the breaker is off and you switch on the light, the mare will switch it off again, even though there's no electricity. That's the thing. Okay, so um, there has been people telling that, uh, uh, saying that the mayor breaks the lights in the house more. That is, I would say, it depends on the ghost, because I found mayors that don't even break lights, but they do start hunting at about sixty percent sanity. So if you're above. 51 I suggest being above 51 to determine if it's a mare if it's above 51 sanity and below 60 then you can probably guess it's a mare and switching on a light will make it roam to another area so let's say for instance you're in the ghost room the ghost rooms in the kitchen you go into the kitchen you switch on the light the ghost will roam to an area where the light is off and it'll probably stay there until you switch the light off, it'll come back. So detecting a mare is very hard with the lights on. Okay. Revenant. 
Okay, so this one is very, very easy to determine. A lot of people say this is the scariest ghost in the game. I don't think so. It's scary when the thing charges you, yes, but... Uh, I have identified Revenant like that many, many, many times. Because what a Revenant will do, it will hunt at a snail pace. It'll walk slow as uh, the Diogen does. It's as slow as the Diogen when the Diogen sees you. But it, it's as fast as the Diogen when the Diogen doesn't see you. So this thing comes at one hell of a speed charging you. So when a Revenant charges you, you immediately smudge, hide. That's the only way you have to survive a Revenant. Okay, so a Revenant is a violent ghost that will attack uh, indiscriminately. The speed can be deceiving as they're slow while dormant. However, as soon as they can move, as soon as they hunt, they can move incredibly fast. Strength, a revenant will travel at a significantly faster speed when hunting their prey, when they see you. Hiding from the revenant will cause it to move very slowly. See, that's what I'm saying. So it'll move very slow. If you find a ghost that is going at a snail pace from the beginning, Definitely a revenant. You can mock it, get into the bus, or finish the quest, or whatever. Up to you. Shade. Another one of my hateful ghosts. <laughs> uh, let's see, did I miss something about revenant? No, I didn't. A shade is known to be very shy. There is evidence to suggest that a shade will stop all paranormal activity if there are people nearby. Strength. Shades are much harder to find. True. Weakness, the ghost will not enter a hunt if there are people nearby. Okay, so this is the trick. I've never experienced it myself, but I've heard people say this. Um, the shade will not hunt you if you are standing in the ghost room with it. It'll actually do nothing when you're standing in the ghost room with it. So you, the trick with the shade is to stand just outside of the ghost room and then it will do stuff and as soon as you enter the ghost room dead quiet so finding a shade is very very tricky but it's got normal speed and as far as I know it doesn't speed up when it sees you um, that that's another way to identify the shade because most guy ghosts have this thing called line of sight when they see you they start running faster uh, I haven't experienced a shade going faster when it saw me. So, that's one way of guessing it's a shade. I guess. The demon. A lot of people's favorite. Demons are the most aggressive ghosts wherever encountered. Known to attack without reason. They seem to enjoy the thrill of the hunt. Strength. Demons will initiate hunts more often than other ghosts. Weaknesses. Demons fear the crucifix and will be aggressive less aggressive near one so this is the thing the demon test if you suspect demon take the crucifix place it outside of the room and it will still burn because what happens with the crucifix it has a double range so you notice the tier one crucifix has a small radius when you place it down you'll see that ring that is the radius so it will be double that the tier two crucifix will be double that so the radius is bigger and it will be much larger scale the tier 3 crucifix it will almost you can place a crucifix one side of the house other side of the house it, it will probably burn this one and eventually that one because it's got double range and the tier 3 crucifix has got a huge range uh, did i miss anything with demon okay the demon hunts very quickly if you have um zero sanity the demon can hunt as quickly as 20 seconds so basically you start your timer one two three four five and so it goes on and when it reaches 20 seconds you have that time to either hide or get your ass out of house because any time from now it can start hunting so the demon hunts really quickly and if you walk into the house and it hunts immediately it's a demon because the other ghosts only start hunting from about 75 80 
sanity where the demon can hunt at any time but there's another thing if you suspect it's a d demon if you walk into a house and it starts to hunt and you immediately mark demon it might be um, the mimic it might be a mimic mimicking the demon so rather go back into the house check for orbs and then come back out because there have been times that I've been fooled by the mimic and it was uh, actually a mimic and not a demon but the mimic has got a lot of fun traits to it the thing is you have to check for orbs have every time that's why I go into the house firsthand with a video camera I'll explain that to you now okay so a yure a yure is the ghost that has returned to the physical world usually for the purpose of Revenge or hatred. Strengths, Ureas have been known to have stronger effect on people's sanity. Weaknesses, smudging the Ure's place of death will trap it temporarily using, reducing how much it wanders. Okay, so you can use a smudge stick to trap a Ure in its room temporarily. Okay, but the Ure also has a unique ability that you can identify with zero sanity. It's called the double door touch. So what it ha will do, it will comp it will open a door all the way and then close it all the way. But you can hear it touch the door twice. And when it touches the door twice, you know it's a Yure. That's basically all the time. The Mimic doesn't really do the double door touch as far as I know. Because I've never had a Mimic do it. It might. But the Ure does the double door touch. So you'll hear immediately it touches the door and then it touches the door again. Then you can definitely say, okay, it's a Ure. Just to be on the safe side, go into the house, check for orbs. But uh, remember, this game, you're a detective. You have to find out what the correct ghost is. So that, and I'm assuming after you've identified the ghost, somebody comes in and removes it or whatever. <laughs> okay, so that is it for the Euro. The Oni. Uh, Onis love scare their victims as much as possible before attacking. They're often seen in their physical form guarding their place of death. Strength. Onis are much more active whilst people are nearby and will drain their sanity faster when manifesting. Weakness only disappear less often while hunting their prey. Okay. So the way to, s to identify an Oni, you have these things called air balls. So what happens is there's a ball of light that approaches you. And as soon as that ball of light approaches you, you rule out Oni because Onis cannot do the air ball event. That's a way to identify it's not an Oni. But Onis tend to do a lot more ghost events. I mean a lot. They will follow you everywhere. So if you have a ghost that's jumping from room to room to room to room and you don't have an air ball event, when you see that ball of light coming to you and it goes... <sighs> When it touches you, you know it's not an Oni. Because they can't do the air ball event. Uh, anything other than o than that? Um, special ability, close door, yell, touch. I don't know what that is all about. But um, I think it, it does the ability more that it actually comes to you and scares you because it kind of apparently the ghost comes up to you um, um, when it's against you it just disappears and it does this ah, sound so they do that a lot more often which I can actually agree with there's a reason I wrote that down so I must have probably seen it somewhere and then said okay this is it alright so the yokai my favorite ghost <laughs> I don't know I love yokais they are super fun for the reason you can get them hunting just by shouting near them. So if you go into the ghost room and you yell and this ghost starts hunting you, it's probably a yokai. Yokais are common ghosts that are attracted to human voices. They can usually be found hunting family homes. 
Strength talking near a yokai will anger it, increasing the chance of an attack, which is true. But like I just said, I go into the ghost room, I yell, and then I run out, it starts chasing me. Every time, it doesn't like my voice. <laughs> Weaknesses, when hunting, a yokai can only hear voices close to it. So, this is what's referred to by the Phasmophobia clan as the dumb ghost. So, you can have your flashlight on, you can have your voice on, and this thing will just ignore you. It will just walk away from you. While, while it's hunting, it'll just go in an opposite direction. Then you're like, yokai? <laughs> I love it because it's the dumb ghost. It's so easy to avoid. If you crouch near a table with your flashlight on, with your mic on, and it stops following you, you can definitely say yokai. Alright. Han too. I hate this ghost too. <laughs> I can't I can't express how much I hate this ghost. But it's easy to identify. A hantu is a rare ghost that thrives in the coldest climates. The cold seems to make them more aggressive and empowered. Strengths lower temperatures will allow the hantu to move faster speeds. Weakness hantus move slower in warmer areas. Okay, so this is true. But there's another thing. A hantu will move fast in cold areas and slow in warm areas. But if you go to the breaker and switch it off, then um, you will see the hantu's breath. As soon as the ghost approaches you, you will see like a little white mist coming from its mouth. You can see the hantu breathing. Immediately you can rule out it's a hantu. It is... Definitely, when you see the ghost breath, Hantu it is. And switching off the breaker will make it faster. Now, Hantus have been known to switch off the breaker a lot more. I would actually say more than Mare. But that is my opinion. And so, if your breaker is going off constantly, definitely get into a ghost hunt and check for Hantu. Um, after viewing orbs, of course. Because mimics are... are Crazy, crazy. Did I mention everything about Hantu? Yeah, I did. Okay, Gorio. When a Gorio passes through a dodge projector using a video camera is the only way to see it. A Gorio will usually only show itself on a camera if there are no people nearby and weaknesses. They are rarely seen from their place of death. Okay. Thing about Gorio. It will never leave its ghost room. If the ghost, if you've been playing, let's say for an hour, because a Gorio is like a shade, it's very hard to find. When a Gorio, uh, you've been playing for an hour, and it's still the same ghost room, even if your uh, change ghost rooms are high, it will never change its ghost room. So it'll always remain. Let's say, for instance, it starts in the kitchen, it will stay in the kitchen for the whole game will never change its ghost room. The way to identify the whole dots thing. You can either place the dots and the camera with a stand and come and stand in the van and see if there are dots or you can put the dots in the room and stand with the video camera outside the room to identify the Gorio. But as when you are standing in the same room as the Gorio, it will never walk through the dots ever. Okay, so that's the Gorio, and it's actually, a f uh, I believe the dots is a forced evidence, so it might work on a no evidence run. I'm not sure. I'm still experimenting with those, so as soon as I've got all my facts together with the no evidence, I will definitely uh, look into that. Right, so a Miling is a very vocal and aggressive ghost. They are rumored to be quiet when hunting their prey. Strength, a miling is known to be quieter when hunting. Weakness, uh, milings m more frequently make paranormal sounds. So, when you have a parabolic mic and it is whispering off the chart, it's like whispering, 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 you know you can circle miling, but then just check if it's a miling. When it starts hunting, you won't be able to hear it. It's only when it comes close to you, you'll be able to hear it. So it'll start flickering. Uh, your, your flashlight will start flickering and flickering and flickering, but you won't hear the ghost. That's how you tell it's a miling. 
also again check for orbs but um, that is another way of identifying the myling alright what else do I have on myling yeah that is basically it for the myling now the onrio the onrio is often referred to as the wrathful spirit it steals souls from dying victims bodies to seek revenge this ghost has been known to fear any form of fire and will do anything to be far from it strength extinguishing a flame can cause an onrio to attack weakness when threatened the ghost will be less likely to hunt okay so when you have a candle in your hand and it's lit the onrio won't hunt it'll blow out the candle before it starts hunting you and it won't hunt immediately after blowing out the candle it will blow out the candle and then start hunting so there is a test for onrio when you place a crucifix in the ghost room you light a candle and you put it next to the crucifix it will blow out the candle and not use the crucifix after the third time that the candle is blown out it will start hunting immediately so the crucifix will burn it's not a uh, it's not a forced hunt uh, or cursed hunt as they say it's a normal hunt that starts so it'll blow out the candle three times and then the um, crucifix will catch a light however if after the third time it's blown out the candle and it starts hunting the candle blowout gets less so then it will blow out the candle twice before it starts hunting again and after that it will only do it once sometimes still three times but it depends if it's killed a player the candles get less so the on rear basically becomes stronger um, so yeah basically holding a candle in your hand and you know it's an on rear it won't hunt until the candle is blown out you're safe there right the twins these ghosts have been reported to mimic each other's actions they alterate their attacks by to confuse their prey either twin can be angered and initiate attack on their prey weakness the twins will often interact with the environment at the same time so this is true sometimes you will hear that they are let's say an object thrown in this room and an object thrown in this room and then you're standing in the middle like what the hell is going on where is the ghost there or is it there then you know it's the twins once again check for orbs <laughs> because I found that uh, a mimic can also do that sucks but you'll f hear things fall in different rooms now another thing I've noticed with the twins one twin is fast and one twin is slower it's slightly faster and slightly slower so you if you are good at hearing listening then you can hear okay um, this one is moving slightly faster than normal and this one is moving slightly slower than normal then immediately if I hear the slow twin for some reason if I hear it I'm like twins <laughs> immediately because the faster one I can't usually detect but the slower one has got a unique walk to it I don't know why anyway what if I wrote about the twin yeah interactions in two rooms then also another thing you'll be sitting in the ghost room and it'll start hunting from another ghost room so it'll start running down the hallway to come and find you or it will come at a snail pace in the hallway to come and find you because they can hunt from either room the nice thing about the twins the rooms are far away from each other so you can find a place to hide easily if you're sitting in the coast room so if you suspect it's the twins just wait for two or three hunts because sometimes it's a slow slow fast and then all fast fast slow so they don't always change ghosts sometimes it stays slow or it stays fast and then you're like this can't be the twins <laughs> there the game tries to confuse you in a lot of ways okay the Raiju another one of my less favorites a Raiju is a demon that fries on electrical current while generally calm they can become agitated when overwhelmed with power 
Strength a Raiju can siphon power from nearby electrical devices, making it move faster. Weakness the Raiju is constantly disrupting electronic equipment when attacking, making it easier to track. Okay. So, from what I've heard, I haven't experienced it myself, but after a Raiju hunts, it turns off your electrical equipment so that is not confirmed i don't think it's true because a lot of times i've gone back into the room and my equipment is still on uh, so that's probably a rumor but having a flashlight near you and no other electrical equipment can be uh, an advantage because you can switch on the flashlight and see it move quickly immediately after switching on your flashlight It'll move quickly and then you switch it off and it'll immediately go back to the slow speed it was before. So that's how to detect a Raiju. Very simple. Or you can place like a, a where, while it's hunting you, you can place a um, EMF, well, uh, not, not, yeah, an EMF reader on the floor or something and as soon as it walks within the radius it'll start speeding up and then it'll stop immediately after going out of the radius you can also use a dots projector uh, but a, do, do, a tier 3 dots projector for instance it will go really fast so careful for that Hunt, you must take the ghost far away from the electrical equipment and then do your test don't do it right there Obake are terrifying shapeshifters capable of taking on many forms they have been seen taking humanoid shapes to attack their, attract their prey Strength, when interacting with environment in the bucket will rarely leave a trace, which I don't think is true. Weakness, sometimes this ghost will shapeshift leaving behind the unique evidence. Okay, so that unique evidence they're talking about is a six finger fingerprint. So you'll be looking at the evidence going, what? That's not five fingers, that's a, un that's a weird hand. He's got six fingers. How the hell does that work? Obake. But remember, the mimic can also do this. So, um, don't immediately rule out a bucket, but it's got a unique evidence, which means the uh, f six finger fingerprint. And also, uh, a bucket is that is a forced evidence. Whenever you're using UV near an obake, uh the obake is forced to use uh, ultraviolet evidence. So that is another way to find uh, Obake. Um, also, while it's hunting you, you will see it, it, it for some reason, while it's busy chasing you, it will change into another, basically while it blinks, it will change into another form and then it will change back. Then you know it's an Obake as well because that is also a nice feature that the Obake does while it's hunting. So as soon as it changes and changes back, then you know, Obake, after checking orbs, of course. The Mimic, the one I've been talking about the whole time, the one that imitates all these other ghosts. Now, like I said, it's a rare thing that it will switch off the light while it's, it's on, or, um, like I said, now change ghost models, or instantly hunt you, but it's possible. And it's forced even with a no evidence hunt. If you see ghost orbs, it's definitely a mimic. So what's going to happen? See spirit box, ultraviolet, and freezing. Okay. So let's say spirit box, ultraviolet, and freezing. Okay. Then you've got mimic. Now you see ghost orbs. As soon as ghost orbs are selected, the mimic disappears over here. And that's another way to trick you. Because if you find these evidence, then there's no mimic. That means you have to remove the ghost orbs because you saw the ghost orbs, but the mimic does not have ghost orbs. It's a forced evidence. So as soon as you see ghost orbs, and you let's say for instance you've got uh, a two evidence, two evidence hunt, and you see this. Mimic. Reason being, or uh, instead of that, let's say this, for instance, right? Then you must check for mimic because you only have two evidence 
that you can collect. Where does the third one come from? Select Mimic, you will win. Trust me. Because <laughs> that ghost orbs are a forced evidence on the Mimic. Alright. Right, so Mimic. Moroi. And the Moroi have risen from the gra grave. Ah. To drain energy from the living. They have been known to place curses on their victims, curable only by antidotes or moving very far away. Um, the weaker their victims, the stronger the Moroi becomes. Moroi suffer from hyper hypersomic weakness, weakening them for long longer periods. Okay, I don't know what that means, but I think I have just found the ghost I'm looking for. Um, the Moroi. Oh, I've already written it down. It's got forced spirit box. <laughs> okay, so when you use the spirit box near the Moroi, it's a forced evidence. Once again, I haven't tried it in a no evidence hunt. But when you speak into the spirit box, it will curse you. And it will answer you every single time. So, no matter where the ghost is, if it's far away from you or close by, if you are in the ghost room and it's roaming and you talk, it will answer you every single time. That's how you know it's a Moroi. The Moroi's also work off of your sanity. So basically, if your sanity is zero, this ghost moves. It's one of the fastest ghosts in the game when your sanity is depleted. So when this thing is running at one hell of a speed and you have sanity medication, use the sanity medication, wait for your sanity to go up, stand in the truck and wait, just give it a few minutes. And when your sanity stops going up, go back into the house, get another hunt and you'll see it will walk very, very slowly. You know it's a Moroi. Because by that time the Mimic also won't have anything to do. Everyone's favorite Diogen. Sometimes surrounded by an endless fog, Diogens have been uh, eluding ghost hunters for years. These ghosts have been reported to find even the most hidden prey before stalking them into exhaustion. Diogen constantly sends the living. You can run, but you can't hide. Weakness to Diogen require a lot of energy to form and will be very slow when approaching its victim. Okay, the rule of the Diogen, do not hide from it, keep looping it, as soon as you go to hide, it will find you, no matter where you hide, you can be hiding in a secluded area far away from everything, it will find you, so when you suspect Diogen, you have to loop it, have to, there's no way about it, Plus, make sure it sees you while you are looping the ghost. Because if it stops seeing you, it's going to start to run very fast. It's going to grab you and you're dead. So, don't hide from a Dio. Let's say, the only aging ghost in the game. <coughs> Days have been known to rapidly age over time, even with the afterlife from what we've learned, they seem to deteriorate faster while within the presence of the living. Strengths upon entering the location say will become active, defensive and agile. Weakness the say will weaken over time, making it weaker, slower and less aggressive. Okay, so the, the way to determine the say is by using a Ouija board. You can use a Ouija board and then ask what the age is. So you click on the Ouija board and it will have the thing drop down and you say how old are you and it will give you a number. Later you come back you drop that little thing again but remember to say goodbye when leaving because the Ouija board still picks up what you're saying. So after asking the question getting the answer say goodbye and then it will lift up and the Ouija board will stop working otherwise you're draining your sanity by speaking. Okay, And then you come back later to the Ouija board, check your sanity, because if your sanity is zero, you're going to break the Ouija board, or less than five, because it takes five sanity to ask the question, where are you? 
And the, my favorite thing about the Ouija board is asking where the bone is. Where is the bone? As soon as you ask this, it'll tell you where the bone is. So that is phenomenal. Love the Ouija board in that in that case. So um, the Thay will get older. Now it's been rumored that you have to be in the ghost room where the Thay is for it to get older. From my experience, just enter the house. Because every time it hunts, it becomes slower and slower and slower. It even becomes slower than a Diogen, according to my knowledge. From my experience. But I've only had a few things. I haven't had many. And that is it for the ghost. So, basically, when you start on professional, you'll see there's your computer. And you can switch on the night vision in a normal time. Then a thing that a lot of people forget to do is they forget to check the board. Now if you are inside the house and you want to check the board, open up your book and go to overview. Then you can also see the name of the person and what objectives you have. Okay, so have a member of your team witness a ghost event, get an average sanity of below 25% and have a, a member of your team escape the ghost during the hunt how this works the person has to the ghost has to see you and then you have to smudge it and get to a hiding spot so that that's a tricky one sometimes all right so you've noticed my sanity hasn't gone down at all we still after all this time we're still at a hundred yeah it does go down 99 89 what 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 but as soon as you open the front door, your sanity starts to drain. Immediately switch on the night vision and crouch down because this will help you find the bone as well. First thing you do, you grab the key here and then you move into the house. Now the first thing you want to do after that, switch on the breaker which is either located on this map in the garage, which is not. Uh, we're going to check for the cursed items as well while we be, while we're here. So the breakers in the basement. Okay, got the breaker. Okay, got it on. Continue looking. I'm not finding the bone yet. The bone actually gives you extra money. So if you're not interested in finding the bone. And that's something you do and then while exploring you can basically check for orbs I can hear it throwing stuff and just make it a little bit louder so I can hear it clearer it's definitely throwing stuff it's either from the living room or the room hello by the way notice in the bottom left corner my mic is still on so the ghost can hear me basically by doing that sometimes uh, bonus in the bathtub I hate it when it happens so the reason I look for the bone beforehand is so I can enjoy the game nothing has happened here yet okay by the way this is a good hiding spot right here you can either hide here from the ghost or you can hide here from the ghost if it's open if you're playing a no hiding there are no hiding spots in the house then you can definitely come to the other area okay I'm still not finding any bone this sucks wait what was that okay, no. I touched something EMF4 hallway ghost. So it's here. Uh, just going back to the vehicle. So as soon as you detect the ghost room, which I'm not sure that was, we're going to check it now using the thermometer. Get yourself a crucifix. First thing. First thing you do, get yourself a crucifix. The reason why? 
is because you need to protect yourself from the ghost so place down the crucifix if you don't have one then you have to hurry your ass up <laughs> 12 no 11 no it has to be less than 10 to be the ghost room 14 hell no seen here 12 what the hell are you just spamming me you asshole okay again place down your crucifix and then you continue looking this is just to protect you for extra protection if you feeling brave and you want to die a lot don't use a crucifix <laughs> Aha! That, by the way, is a ghost event. But it's still 13.9 in here, and the, the weather is clear. Probably an Oni? I think I'm dealing with an Oni? Okay, so another thing I want to show you guys quickly is check the weather. Alright? This is clear skies. So if it's snowing, it will also um, work with your instruments. It'll give you health. Okay. Let's see kitchen. Twelve. Sixteen. Where the hell is your ghost room, bro? pick up the crucifix that's why I love playing with multiple people you find the ghost room a lot quicker aha this is what I spoke about Ouija, the Ouija board so now you can click on the board where's the bone Utility room. Okay. <coughs> Goodbye. Okay, so when it started, the ghost starts hunting. Make sure all your electrical <coughs> equipment is switched off and you mute yourself. See, I'm muted now so the ghost can't hear me. <coughs> so the bone is in here. Look at that. How should I have found you there? Bastard. Take a photo. Okay, let's see. Maybe it's here. You gobshite. Where are you hiding? Aha! It's a garage ghost. Okay. So, notice that my EMF reader said 1.8 0 0.2 0 0.9 and also notice I have a, a breath you can see my breath now okay so I can start switching off all these lights except for the kitchen that we're gonna leave on for in case we have to loop the ghost we now have the photo I'm just gonna get my stuff here yes I hear you I'm coming I'm coming Ghost is coming impatient. This is the reason you get the key and the picket. Whoa! You already started hunting, bro? Wait a minute. Demon? Not an Oni? Or is it a Thay? Are you a Thay? What happened to my sanity? My sanity is gone. Crap! So this could be anything. I'm still thinking only then. I'm thinking only. By the way, something I did not mention before. Okay. So the spirit can hunt at 50%. The wraith can hunt at 50%. The phantom can hunt at 50%. Poltergeist can hunt at 50%. The banshee can't, uh, can hunt at 50 
Gin 50, Mare 60, uh, Revenant 50, The Shade 35, Demon any 7 Sanity, but it usually starts at 70, uh, Yura at 50, Oni at 60, Yokai at 80, when you're talking in the same room as it as it is, the Hunch is 50, the Gorio is 50, Myling is 50, Onryo is 60, the Twins... 50, Raiju 65, Obake 70, the Mimic any, depending on who it's mimicking, but usually starts hunting at 50, uh, Moroi at 50, Diogen at 40, I don't think that's right, and the Thay can also start hunting at 75. So if you've got an earlier hunter, it's probably Thay, maybe Twins, and Demon, because the Demon can hunt at any sanity, but start using my crucifix so um, now I can basically deploy the camera on the stand grab that use an empty slot grab that and then go back I'm probably gonna die but who cares <laughs> like I said this is a tutorial video and I'm not super good at the game but I'm good Stop touching my doors. Oh yeah, I wanted to switch it off. What? Me? Me, you bastard? Did you see that now? That is the double flick that the me in invokes. So it's basically now stronger. I don't think me has orbs. I don't think me has orbs. So just to shed a little light in the room okay so the evidence that a mare has my favorite ghost spirit box spirit orb and ghost writing so we need to get a ghost writing book now this is very essential okay let me just see what I've got in my hand oh yeah the camera I can basically put the camera down now for now I'm going to grab another crucifix, I'm going to grab the spirit box, and I'm going to grab the book. Okay. And there's no shame in camping out in the van, don't let anybody tell you otherwise. I've camped out the van many times and i found my ghost. It's a patience game. Detectives are patient people. May you bastard. Alright. Leave the spirit box on and throw it on the floor. The hell? Remember to switch off your mic. I had crucifixes in there. Dumbass. <laughs> See, no electronic equipment. Lost line of sight. Okay, it stopped hunting. You can hear it by... You... It's definitely a mare. Definitely a mare. Oh my goodness. You bitch. Stop it. <laughs> it's really hard to kill me. <laughs> it wants me to die inside of me. <laughs> uh, you shite. Okay, so basically, now, inside the van, you can check for orbs. So let's see. I'm still not detecting any ghost orbs, though. But the nice thing about your cameras is that you can turn them. Click, 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 click. It used the mare ability twice. That definitely tells me it's a mare. But what's funny to me... Is that it hasn't done an airball effect yet. And it hasn't switched off the breaker. So I'm not too sure. Aha. Aha. Look there. Look there. Ghost Orby Orbies. Ghost Orby Orbies. So now you have ghost orbs. Okay. And this is all way, also the way to check for Gorio. Because you can basically look here. 
You can also place the book at a range that you can detect the ghost. Especially while playing alone. So I'm going to grab this. This and this for security reasons. Because this thing is crazy. But it's because my sanity is so low. I've done all three objectives. Now I can basically just finish up. If you want a perfect objective you have to get all the photos as well. That thing's going crazy in there. Wait, can I hide here? Yeah, I can. Okay, I'm going to teach you that now. I hasn't done writing yet. Place your salt at the door. Uh, smudge stick UV. Let's check the UV. It touched the door. No. Light's still on. Yeah. Oh, come on. Now it is um, very crucial that while hiding in a cupboard, hold the door <laughs> closed. Then, still hunting. Hold, keep holding it with your mouse button so that you can keep it closed. Otherwise, the door, the ghost will yank it open. Savage, you can't even let me do the tutorial video, can you? <laughs> <coughs> Whoa. <coughs> Sorry about that. <coughs> I'm just getting super excited about something. I don't know why. Alright, let's grab two more. So you notice what I did? As soon as my heartbeat started, smudged and ran. Get the shit out of me. Okay, so this is how you know it's not a wraith. <laughs> Hello, you shite. Speak to me, Horton. Say something. I know you're a mare. Let's see, mare? A spirit box? Yeah. Cop shite. Stop shite! Fuck, it's freezing. Wait, haunt you? No ghost breath. Don't run in my general direction, you bastard! You're gonna kill me! I should have turned around. Look for a better hiding spot in the garage. But I still think it's a me. Welcome back. I've prepared some jobs for you. It's a Ure. Okay, I'm confused as fuck over here. Yura is a double door touch one, yeah? Yeah, the double door touch one. And it did the mayor ability twice. Ghosts are broken. <laughs> okay, maybe it's a good idea to get myself some sanity medicine. So it's time to teach you guys how to get sanity medicine. Yeah, I know, right? I'm not, not the best at this game though. Okay, I don't even have money at the moment. Sanity medication gonna add some of that so when you want to buy something you go to the store you'll see that there's a little up arrow and it'll tell you how much it is you hold the button to buy it then you go to your um, quick loadout and you basically select from here what you want to do if you want tier 1 items you go down to tier 1's and if you've got tier 3 items you go up to tier 3 and, and what what so you basically use this one to select all or you can just select them individually and then from here you can add how many items you have. So I've got a specific way of putting my stuff so that I don't lose a lot of money. <coughs> Not that it helps me because I, I, I do die a lot in the game. I know, I'm, I've been playing the game for two years and I still die a lot. 
But it's a give or take investigation game, so I still love it. Still love it. Okay, right, once again, this, 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 let's go. Grab the key. Firelight, average sanity, and prevent hunting using crucifix. Those are so easy objectives. Such easy objectives. And it's clear skies again. Wonderful, wonderful. First of all, open the door. Grab this. If you're struggling to see, you can use this. I usually hit this light switch over here. Check the garage first. Garage door is partially open, which is weird. Okay, lights on. It's probably from using the Ouija board that my sanity dropped is low. Let's find the ghost first, because I'm not going to uh, spend all my time trying to find the bone now. This is a tutorial video, so I'll put the bone aside for now. Let's see, no monkey paw. Those are your cursed possessions. Wait, it's mirror, so you can use the mirror to identify the ghost room. Cheers! I don't use the mirror, I try to find it myself. Nothing out of ordinary here. Nothing here either. Ah, oh, come on! I wanted a photo, you asshole. Hello? You in here? Oh, look, 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 look it. Got a bone. Okay, I'm gonna guess it's a hallway ghost. Now we can check for orbs. Any orby orbies? I'll go and fetch a tripod and do it with a tripod. So much simpler. The fact that you're trying to lock me into the house is weird. <coughs> you stalker, you. Alright, since I've got the bone and everything, I'm dropping the camera for now. Let's grab this, this, and the spirit box. Like I said, I know it's annoying, but leave the spirit box on. MF2. 12. Eight point two. We got the ghost room. It's here. Fabulous. Okay, so this is the ghost room. Can start setting up. Gonna go fetch a tripod for that now. Crucifix in the middle of the room. Spirit box. Okay, that was one touch, not two touches. Salt, salt, salt. Since I've positively identified the ghost room, I can use salt. In professional, it mostly stays in the same ghost room. You can place the salt on top of each other. It's just standing there. <laughs> Wait a minute, did I, did I get there? Woo. Woo, woo, woo. Hold your horses, slow your roll there, buddy. By the way, if you hear an activity, don't be brave, just run. <laughs> well, what most people do is they're like, what is that? What is happening? And then they automatically just stand there and look stupid. All right, so I'm gonna place the second crucifix here because you need an exit strategy. You need somewhere to run and then you need somewhere to hide. That's not a hiding spot, so I'm gonna... Wait, did it actually switch on a light? Did it switch on the light? If it switched on the light, not a may. Let's see.
No, yes, maybe. I think I switched on this one. Alright, well, I'm gonna leave you here. Alright, and then I have to go and fetch the stand still. Okay, so dodge projector and the stand. So it's a good idea to place the stand in a corner of the room. Not so high though, I need it lower. Lower to the ground. There you go. And you grab this. And you place it here. Okay. And now you switch off the light. Oh wait, incense first. Incense first. Yeah, so this is going to be my last round. Unfortunately, the video went on a little bit longer than I thought it would. Oh, I forgot my lighter. Nice. <laughs> Imagine smudging the ghost like, smudge, 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 no! <laughs> Alright, so then light this bitch up, put it down. Uh, where can I place you? Okay. I'll put you here. Cool. And now we start. So we touch the door. It did! Look at that! I forgot my camera! And it starts, so we automatically have fingerprints. Dots. It blew out my candle. Fingerprints and dots. Automatically. So it's not a Gorio because it also appeared in front of us and not through the camera. It's a phantom or a banshee. It appeared on the dots without the video camera. So that's a nice way to rule out Gorio. I'm just getting my photo camera. Um. Wait, and the parabolic mic. Let's get the parabolic. To hear the unique banshee scream. Let's see if I can find the unique banshee scream. Okay, I just want to take some photos. One, two. Remember to crouch while taking the photo. Because you want three star photos, you don't want two star photos, eh? Okay, that's the second time it blew out the candle, so I can take a photo of that too. And then you can pick up the pick damn it pick up the candle and place it back down there we go and now we can listen sit here and listen this ghost likes the dark You can also ask the ghost nice things like, can you write in the book? Can you blow out the candle? And usually they do this. See there, three star photos. Wait a minute. Aha, two star photo. You delete that one. If you're playing with friends, just ask them to delete it too. Because you want, for a perfect investigation, you want three star photos all around. UV and dots. Okay, so for it's not going to be EMF five. It's not going to be ghost writing. It's not going to be freezing temperatures. It's going to be ghost orb and spirit box. Let me just 
pick this up and put it back because I need one more photo. So I needed to blow out the candle yet again. Ah, wrong one. It's not gonna it's not gonna be that either. Trying to get my last photo. I'll just wait for the candle again. It's usually the simplest way of doing things. Come on, give me the banshee scream. Oh, please give me the banshee scream. Scream, ya bitch. From here, I can hear the fan. <laughs> Come on, give me something. I've got about 15 minutes left. Aha! Finally, blow out the candle again. Weird, it's got uh, the behavior of an Onrio. Which is super sus. Well, since I've got some time to kill, I'm going to go and fetch a second smudge. Can never have too many smudges. And then you can also use some sanity medication, but I'm trying to get it to hunt. Oh, yeah, it's not going to hunt for a while though. And the candle's been keeping our sanity up. That's another thing. If you want to run into the house and keep your sanity a hundred, you light the candle and you run all through the house looking for the ghost and your sanity will remain at a hundred percent. That's another tip for you guys that are still new in the game. So you can find the ghost room using a candle. Just have to use your ears as well. Okay, so let's listen. Come on, give me a banshee screen. Please be a banshee. Oh yeah, the light is on. The ghost is in the room. And while you're sitting here, you can also do this. You can... I want the camera. There you go. You can also sit here and do this. And you can check for orbs. Another little tip. I haven't checked if it wrote in the book yet. No. Oh yeah, but it's not going to be ghost writing. What am I doing? Let me switch this off again. It's either going to be orbs or spirit box. We haven't gotten spirit box yet. Which means it's not going to be a banshee. Because you don't have to ask the spirit box questions. Just keep it on and keep your mic on. Make sure your mic is on. And you're talking consistently. Is it even in this room? I it has to. There we go. It's orbs. It is a banshee. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I gotta listen for the scream. I simply have to. Okay, I'm just gonna sit here and wait for it to scream. Maybe I should just sit outside here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my crucifix. What I usually tell the people is sit on top of the crucifix. I know it sounds stupid and cowardly maybe, but it's worth it. Come on, give me a scream. Come on, I've got 14 minutes. Give me a scream.
<laughs> it just drove past me. <laughs> yeah, I do. I, I know. I'm making a tutorial video and I die a lot. I seriously, I die a lot in this game. But looping the ghost, running away from the ghost, doing all this without cheating and stuff, it's really, really difficult. So you have to kind of. It's a give or take. But if you die and you have identified the ghost correctly, you do actually get some money. A little bit. And you lose some items and stuff. But yeah, and this banshee is really not talkative. See, and it also can't be a mimic because it's not one of these. Ultraviolet spirit box and freezing. Okay, so it used the crucifix. I'm still waiting for a scream. Uh, the tier 2 crucifix can burn twice. Come on, give me a banshee scream. Come on. I know you're a banshee. Give me a banshee scream. Another way to check if it's a mimic. Is by... If you remove the ghost orbs. Then you can see. Well, it's getting really close to hunting. So... I'm just going to place the crucifix a little bit closer. As you can see, I'm still within the within the radius because you can see when you place it down, there should be a radius. See there? So it's got a huge radius towards it. I'm still within the range of the crucifix. Come on. Just give me a scream. Have they removed the scream ability? What's going on? <laughs> you bitch. <laughs> Fuck. Now I have to leave. No banshee scream. Four hunts. Okay, and another thing, here's a tip, when leaving make sure you've got it circled. Okay, so I've got 10 photos, I've got the, f um, the ghost, and I've got the bone. Now it's supposed to give me a perfect investigation, if I guess the ghost right. Thank you for not giving me a scream, you bitch. <laughs> See there, um, got all the evidences, got the boast evidence. That is a daily bonus, so you get that sometimes. But this is a perfect investigation. And I got the level, the tier 2 smudge. Yay! Okay. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you actually come right with finding the ghosts and don't struggle as much as I do with finding forced evidence. I uh, hope to see you guys soon. Keep well.